called chelation therapy. So I'm going to first introduce why and what it is. What is chelation? Chelation is basically the binding of metal ions to a chemical which then enhances the excretion of that metal from the body. The term chelation comes from the Greek word for chelae or crab claw, something that grabs it. And this form of binding occurs naturally in nature in molecules such as the way cobalt is bound in vitamin B12 or magnesium is bound in chlorophyll. So it's not a, a synthetic thing, it's something that occurs naturally in, in certain situations. Why use chelation? Chelation therapies are used to remove from the body heavy metals and toxic minerals which, if left, would cause illness or tissue damage. What do we want to remove? Aluminium, antimony, arsenic, bismuth, cadmium, copper, iron, lead, mercury, platinum, thallium, uranium. All of these are things that um, if we have much of a body burden of them are going to cause us problems. So these are the things that we want to deal with. Why remove copper and iron, you ask? Aren't these essential minerals? The answer is yes, they are. Why would you want to remove them? Simply because they act as catalysts to free radicals by the way of the Fenton reaction. There is increasing evidence to involve free radicals in the causation of degenerative diseases. Now, if you've heard what I had to say this morning, there is no such thing as free radical induced tissue damage. Um, so this terminology that we've used for so long in describing these things, we need to rethink. Um, these so-called free radicals that are produced are leading to, rather than damage, an imbalance in the redox balance in the body, in the cells, and it's, it's this imbalance of, of redox potential in cells is what we're looking at particularly, because this in turn has an effect on um, such things as second messenger um, initiation within cells um, as the energy production in mitochondria and so on. And there is really no evidence out there in the literature in animal studies or um, human studies to demonstrate that oxidative damage actually does occur in cells. There is absolutely none. What is happening is there is a, an alteration in the redox balance and copper and iron can promote this imbalance. Heavy metals, some heavy metals can also cause problems with this. If we look at some of these metals and see what, what they are and what they do, aluminium is the commonest exposure is industrial but aluminium salts are widely used as anti-flocculants in town water supplies. Many of the town water supplies where there's a lot of fine particulate matter in the water, they use al aluminium salts to precipitate that so you get clear water. It's used for clarifying the water. And some town water supplies um, actually have quite high levels of aluminium. In Melbourne, um, the one that stands out is, is Geelong. Geelong have very high levels of aluminium because they use a lot of aluminium salts. And also um, the um, dam, which is just north of Melbourne, also uses a fair bit. But Geelong's the one that really stands out. They're also found in deodorants and antiperspirants. Um, and also now, more and more, you will find there is aluminium in many of the vaccines that are being used. They've taken mercury out, but they've put aluminium in. So a lot of them now have aluminium in vaccines. So it's another potential source of aluminium. Um, it causes neurotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, bone marrow impairment. Antimony. The most common exposure is through fire retardant chemicals. You know all these kiddies' bedclothes and, and pyjamas and dressing gowns and that, they've got a label on them that says treated with fire retardant. The fire retardant chemicals they use are antimony salts. So that's probably the commonest exposure. And the same with um, a lot of sheets and bedclothes that are made for kiddies have, have antimony in them. It's been suggested that it may be a factor in sudden infant death syndrome and there is some good evidence to back that up. 
Uh, there were a number of papers published in England a few years ago talking about this. It's certainly been implicated as a potential causative factor in autism. It's possibly a carcinogen and it commonly causes GI symptoms and hemolysis. Arsenic. Commonest exposures are from copper arsenate, treated pine. Interestingly enough, I listened a year or two ago to a program on the radio where they were interviewing a scientist who had been um, authorised by the government to look at the toxicity of copper arsenate before they okayed it for use. All the work that he and others did on it showed that it was significantly toxic, but they went ahead and licensed it for use on, on treating wood anyway. Um, a lot of the kids' playgrounds for a long time that were wooden were being made with treated pine, which had copper arsenate in. And most of the treated pine that was out there a few years ago had copper arsenate. The one that had a greenish tinge to it is the copper arsenate. And one of the things that people often do with treated pine, if they've had something built and they have bits left over and they have a wood burning stove, in the stove, what happens? All the arsenic comes out in the vapours that come out from the stove. So, major problem. These days, the um, treated pine is not being treated anymore with copper arsenate. Um, they've realised that it was very toxic. Mine tailings are common. The area where I work, close to where I am, uh, it was an old gold mining area at the turn of the 1800s, 1900s. It was a um, major gold mining area. Um, and they used arsenical compounds to extract the gold from the um, stuff they dug out. So all the mine tailings around the area, and this is now becoming a significantly built up area and people are building houses and living in these areas, um, has arsenic in the mine tailings. So arsenic is not uncommon. Common weed killers that are used, and a lot of people have these in their garden and that, um, uh, often contain arsenic. It acts by combining with sulfhydryl groups on enzymes and interferes with cellular metabolism. It causes gut disorders, neurotoxicity, anemia and various cancers. Bismuth. Commonest source is medications. Not anymore. Um, we haven't had bismuth subgalate in things here for some years. Um, except for one of the products that I think is still available for treating gastric ulcers. Um, um, a lot of the medications for treating ulcers and um, for treating um, bowel related, when I was a student we used to use um, bismuth and opium um, for treating diarrhoea. Uh, it was a very common thing. Um, they used to pack people's noses with bip gauze, bismuth iodoform paraffin paste. And it's this yellowy sort of coloured stuff. Bismuth was in very common use then. Um, the Yanks still have a product called Pepto-Bismol, which you can buy over the counter, like we buy um, many of the antacids here, um, which contains bismuth. Um, but there's not a lot of it out there now, but there, there may still be some. Every now and again I see somebody who's got a um, significant amount of um, bismuth um, on a hair analysis. Um, so it's, it's out there still and you will still occasionally see patients with it. Um, it causes encephalopathy, mental deterioration and epilepsy. Cadmium, common industrial sources, um, batteries, cigarette smoke, pigments, cadmium yellow. You know the bright yellow poster paints that the kids play with. Cadmium yellow is the, the dye, cadmium oxide. And kids are very inclined to go painting things with their fingers and going and we'll pick it up from the, from the cadmium yellow. And kari sauce, most kari sauce with leaded petrol also has cadmium in it as well. It causes loss of taste and smell, it causes irritability, it causes liver damage, it causes prostate cancer, um, it causes hypertension and vascular disease. Copper, ubiquitous in nature. Excessive levels of it are seen in Wilson's disease where there is a peculiar problem with the liver and the body's ability to eliminate copper. Um, it acts as a catalyst, as we said before, to free radical production. Um, it displaces zinc from tissues. It is neurotoxic. It is nephrotoxic. It is hepatotoxic.